here are some dog biscuits for Penny. Biscuits for bad Penny, asks Frank. Penny has been nothing but trouble all day long, Frank says. He's been in everyone's way. Why should he get any biscuits? You don't think he should get any? I ask Frank. Of course not, says Frank. He is a bad dog. No, Frank. What Penny did was bad. But Penny is not bad. And if we had taken time to play with him, perhaps he wouldn't have been so much trouble. Now go on over and make friends with him again. Hey. How uh, are you? I'm, I'm all right. How are you? I'm fine. Yeah. Uh, I haven't gone through things. I mean, you've gone through... Uh, it's been a hard week. I uh, had to watch that Fran Leibowitz thing on Netflix. <laughs> no, it's been a shitty week so far. Do you want to uh, bring us up to... Well, first of all, no one knows, right? Uh, I mean, by the time this comes out, people will know. I don't know. Well, they, if they follow my wife on Facebook, they know. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot. I so seldom go there, girlfriend. Yeah. Um... Uh, Clyde took a very uh, steep turn for the worse yesterday. He was uh, trending in in the very much the right direction to the point on Sunday where he was, uh, you know, he was walking real natural. I mean, not very much because we weren't letting him move around much. Uh, but you know, he had a uh, more of a spring in his step, and then something uh, lurched him that day. And by the end of the day, it's like he wasn't work. It's like his back legs were wobbly. Right. And then uh, we woke up yesterday morning, and uh, he was fucking paraplegic. Literally, he like was crawling on his front his front paws with his back legs just dragging behind on the floor. Was he in pain? No, he was kind of like, "Hey, I think I got this figured out." <laughs> <laughs> but we were just like, oh! <laughs> so, so we went to a vet, and then we went from that vet to a neurologist vet, and that neurologist that performed surgery last night and uh he's doing better in terms of pain now uh his legs are are slow to come back to life but it looks like they're on track for him to be be uh, okay but it's uh he had a huge uh a herniated disc mm. and it uh it apparently just went you know straight to his spinal cord and cut off half his body so We'll see. Uh, we'll see. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be a month and m or more. It's going to be six weeks probably of him in crates and things like that. And mm. he can't even pee on his own yet. So we may have to be expressing his bladder and stuff. So what, is, what does that mean? Well, I haven't fully explored it because I'm kind of hoping that comes back <laughs> before he comes back. Uh, because I was doing that one of my painting periods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You remember I had that blue period, right? Sure. Then there was that period that they said I was, it seemed like he's expressing his bladder. Yeah, he was. I think it was a lot of yellow. Jackson Peelick. <laughs> zing zing zing! You just won two hundred Q dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a uh, it was a whirlwind, horrible day yesterday. And, I can imagine. Uh, and. Uh, and plus, it's just like a kick to the nuts price tag for all this. So. Yeah, you, 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 you know, I'm not saying it was a Jewish thing to do, but it was a human thing to do. Yeah, I was just I'm a kid. That's not going to be cheap. No, let's just say it's a good thing for little Hotch that uh, Clyde didn't go down two weeks earlier. <laughs> so well, that's uh, that's the that's the. The news. He's doing. Why did you he, call my brother? Why have you been calling my brother? I don't nothing. I just, I just wanted to see. I don't you, understand. I wanted that. to see if he had your number. That has. This will not stand. <laughs> I want him removed from all the podcasts, gift tax, anything. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, have I? Did I ask you previously? Is that? Uh, is anything to do with the kind of dog Clyde is, or just a just weird thing? No, it's totally it has to do with the kind of dog he is because he's he's a corgi uh, based creature, and they have long bodies and therefore more stress on their spines. Wow. Okay. And uh, Lucky doesn't have these issues, right? Lucky does not seemingly have these issues. She doesn't have the long body. So for her size, Lucky is good to go. Yes, she seems perfectly proportioned for her skeleton. Sounds like me. Exactly. 
Lucky and I have a lot in common. Yeah, as Clyde and I have a lot in common. <laughs> I have a yeah, could you explain long, that? I have a long body, short legs, and a fucked up back, too. So. And it's, it is literally this. It's not literally the same problem. It pretty much is exactly the same problem, yeah. In fact, he he pretty much had the same surgery that I had. Although, oh. although I was able to fucking walk the next day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am... I was... Uh, oh, Susan sends her love and sends her love to Clyde. Thank you. And uh, Clyde was very sweet with Susan. When Susan, when last time we saw people... He's a sweetie pie, that's why. Yeah. Oh boy! So, so I bet you've got, uh, have. Got, I'm sorry. Did you get a lot of great anecdotes? <laughs> uh, that was the one I just told. That was it, pretty much. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> there's plenty ahead. I assure you. Ah oh, man, and so mo- Monday really was it. Uh, when you texted me on Monday, and I, I don't know, I why I yelled at you for trying to. Yeah, it was a little bit harsh, but you know, I'll, like, I'll accept the, the tough love. You know, the show must go on. It's not my business. Show business is not my business. There is no emotion to, for pets in show business. All right. I thought one of those would land. Can you at least sweeten this? <laughs> I can sweeten it. You could. I can shorten it. That's what I mean. That's code. When I say sweeten, I mean remove it. Hey, you know what? This, I bet this would be good sweeten. Get it out. <laughs> Take it out like a cancer. Oh man, but uh yeah, so when you texted me yesterday, you this was before the operation or you know or I think you must have been scheduling it. You scheduled I, it. I think it was he, just a stressful day. Yeah. Miserable is how you described it. Is it? Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm not trying to hang you up. It's not a prank show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at what Josh said yesterday. I'm falling apart inside. So Josh, what if I really what if I never ceased being some kind of a morning DJ? Josh, so what happened when you got back from the clinic? What'd they say? 65 degrees downtown Los Angeles. Six minutes after the hour. Stop saying what time it is, you stupid Jew. Stop it. What are you talking about, Josh? 14 (laughs) minutes to the hour. Now it makes no sense, you idiot. And that's Josh Elvis Weinstein. Weinstein because the derivation of his name is German. (laughs) I literally forgot I was still here. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah, I just drifted off. You know off. what, buddy? You <laughs> needed it. You know what, I was buddy? Like, hey, I'm in my car with a bad AM DJ. Perfect. You know what, buddy? Lean on me. Well, you know, just, I've been singing, practicing. I'm, you know, I told you that I should believe in myself. Yeah. So I've been just like letting it belt. So what do you think of this voice? I just started coming out of me. Lean on me. When you're not strong, I'll, I'll be your friend. What do you think of that? I think it's an upgrade. Serious? <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Bum, 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 bum. Josh puts Andy down. Bum, 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 bum. In any direction he wants to go. Bum, 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 bum. It's awful, but it's an upgrade from your voice. We've heard in the, on the thing. I really do not like birthday clown Andy. <laughs> no extra charge for that song. Hey, kids. I'm a 64-year-old birthday clown. Hey, kids. Bing, bing, bing. That man is scaring me. I saw Capturing the Freedmans. All right, stop it. Come on, Josh. Get your mind out of the gutter or wherever it is that Capturing the Freemans is. <laughs> it was in the gun rack there for a second. Whoa. I would not want to see you and a, with a gun. No, I'm good, I'm good with me. a gun. I'm very good with a gun. I'm sure you are. That's why I say I want to see you with it. I didn't, wasn't uh, uh, challenging you. I was threatening you. <laughs> I'm a world-class ar- <laughs> I'm a world-class archer. Archer. Yeah. I've watched more Archer episodes than anybody in town. (laughs) 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 Comedy is something that makes you feel good. All right. All right. All right. All right. But let me ask you a question, though. You're back here today. Now, how how long? We don't know how long. How long Clyde has to be staying where Clyde's staying? He may well come home tomorrow. Okay. Because if at these prices. 
he better come home with a uh, extra bed, yeah, some chew toys. I don't know where I'm going with that. The gift basket. A gift basket. <laughs> And you told me this. I did not realize that you had through uh, through Writers Guild. You have cat and dog insurance. Did something in your head just go? Be a dick, <laughs> quick! Be a dick. No, no. <laughs> this is my. It said you could make light of this whole thing. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Operation Room Read. It is the wrong time to tell you, Josh, that for just $19 a month, you too can avoid I Love That Song, but I don't want to hear it anymore from Willie Nelson. When the check engine light comes on, that's game over. (laughs) Hey, I'm Ice-T. Now, you know with the cars today, you can't fix it with a wrench and a hammer. (laughs) Oh, yeah. What's that other guy's name from ESPN? Chris Berman. Chris Berman. Chris Berman. Is your car rumbling, stumbling, bumbling to the finish line? <laughs> Aren't you sweet? You know, I can get myself to a bad <laughs> night with Aren't You Sweet? Yeah. Or You Need a Level. You Need Comic Timing. <laughs> <laughs> you Need a Writer. Now, that would be funnier, right? The Burbank Firm. We're not clever with jokes or commercials, but I bet you we'll do a good job on it. There's no way you can rescue a bad commercial. But we can do a probate. And uh, this guy knows what I'm talking about. Probate sounds like something happened on my wedding night. But you know what, folks? You're wonderful wonderful crowd. (laughs) Okay, look. Did you ever see the Dick Van Dyke where they try to make him write material for the Mob boss's kid. Ah, uh, yes, I vaguely remember. That. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> and his song is "You Look Like a Great Crowd Tonight." I always love. Could get that in my mind. I'm gonna make you laugh tonight. And wouldn't that be great if, if we could start out with a song? We did not come from that show business time. Uh no, we none of us have theme songs. Yet our roots are in vaudeville. We're two Jews from the Slavic region. I don't know if we are, but I just read something about. The Slavic region, so I think I'm an expert. Yeah, of course. Uh, (laughs) Of course. Are you saying I walk around like an expert? Uh, No, a blowhard. Oh! (laughs) Hey, you took me by surprise on that one. Much worse. The the timing is worse. The timing on that was just vicious. (laughs) The timing of a man who wants to. It's the timing of a man who, if he had a knife, would be stabbing me. Do you have pet insurance? I have to tell you, when I hear you say it, I go, Whoa, what won't I do? <laughs> I, I turn every every uh, every situation that doesn't directly affect me on its head. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know what it is, Josh? I just find humor in other people's unfortunate developments. You really seem to, yeah. You know why? Schadenfreude is really sick. It gets down to you where you least expect it. Oh, why are you smiling, Andy? <laughs> Clyde's in the hospital. That's not right. Yeah, that wasn't that great. <laughs> Come on, Josh. You're, you know what you're doing now? I know what you're doing. Hurting you know inside? How to, Hurting? No, you know how to give the give it. You know how to give it. You know how to get into someone like me. Who really believes that every thought I have? I'm playing the long game. I've been taking notes yeah. for 400 hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wrote this uh, joke today, and I was thinking, wow, if it was based on uh, if it was based on topicality, it would be considered an okay joke. And the joke is, oh yeah, the expression, you know, I don't have any agency. But they didn't used to say that, right, Josh? Play along with me. Uh, no, th- people didn't talk that way, right? No, not in my day. Right. Of course, wouldn't you know it, they start using that expression when my agent switches to manager. That's my luck. Wow. When, every- <laughs> <laughs> when everybody else... <laughs> wow. You sound like Bowser. <laughs> 
bad joke. Horrible premise, bad joke. Bad joke. Bad joke. Bad bad joke. Bad joke. Bad joke. Bad bad joke. That's that. That defines that whole decade. Whoa, whoa. One six two five. Ooh, ha, ha. Who put the Jew in the Jew be Jew be Jew? Who put the Jew in the jabba jabba jing jong? Oh, have a couple of Jews write the songs, but stay out of the studio. <laughs> were there any Jewish crooners? Were there any Jewish? They were called, Ju- they were called Juniors, actually. <laughs> it was Frankie Valley. Uh, he was Italian. Right. But Lou Reed <laughs> was Jewish, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if he was. <laughs> who was cool in rock and roll who was a Jew? Jim uh, Morrison? No. Uh, no. <laughs> Neil Diamond? Uh, Bob, D- <laughs> Bob Dylan. I just realized the world's greatest, the world's, and my favorite hero, Bob Dylan, of course. I, yeah. uh, you know, and, uh, and, he, and the thing I love about it is he never changed his name to something else that would run away from his Judaism. Right. That's why I respect them. Or man. literally he, run away from Judaism to Christianity. Right, right. <laughs> and then back. Right. And I think back and forth three, seven, eight, nine times. Well, you know what he said? He said, you got to He said, you got to serve somebody. But you know what? I backed the wrong horse. <laughs> Turns out Jesus. I, I did need a weatherman. God damn it. Jesus Christ. Now, what was it with you and Jesus Christ, Bob? There was a certain thing. <laughs> I liked a guy who was self-important who used to be a Jew. I liked the whole idea of it. But then what made you go exit it? I mean, it, was, it looked like you. it was a good fit. I realized I couldn't actually get to the Jesus level of the whole scam. Did you say scam, Bob? Did you say scam? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, this is the thing. This is why we're so... How popular again are we in the... Uh, top 10 itunes because we bring voices we bring voices we are number and... one on the flatline chart <laughs> <laughs> oh all right okay i'm all right now boo hoo hoo ha 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 scoop a doop i i can't believe that we've done 20 minutes so far without me well i've you know i've slowed down the show i've but i haven't ruined the show but I am feeling now the, the pre- like Tuesday. That's not usually my vibe. Would you fucking save this show? Just come in. Why don't you say? Tell me you have a. Uh, uh, don't hang up, but say you have a pain in your in your uh, gazoink gazoink. Yeah. Well, let's talk. <laughs> let's, <laughs> talk let's talk. <laughs> have you watched the Friendly Boys thing? No, I haven't <laughs> watched it. I don't know. Uh, uh, oh, what you tweeted made me laugh and. What is it exactly? Is it a Showtime doc? <laughs> it's it has Ma- to be HBO, right? It's Martin Scorsese. It's on Netflix. Oh, okay, okay. And it's a mo- and he's the talking to her. Well, it's mostly her him laughing. While well, she- is she in a theater or is she in yeah, his living in, room? She's in all sorts of locations because <laughs> he's chopping from you know mediocre malt to mediocre mo. Uh, what did you say? Mediocre what? As opposed to a bon mot. <laughs> <laughs> it's from mediocre mo to mediocre mo. There's no, there's no moments where there's brilliant Fran Leibowitz like she can be. There's funny, but there's never brilliant. But he's presenting her in this way like she's like the entire fucking Algonquin round table. You know, it's just, it's just like just topic after topic and she doesn't you know her thing is everything annoys me it's like a bad comic hook you know and sure <laughs> we can say that's the kindler approach <laughs> but what but don't you, bring me into your goddamn <laughs> annoying review of another jew yeah it's it's <laughs> it's the same approach but you have a thing yes <laughs> you know yes and you're you know if if it was just your jokes it would be a problem <laughs> What? Why is it still but, staying? But your jokes about your jokes. Why is the and, focus still on me? Because I don't we understand. know that's how it always ends up. Anyway. It's a minute later, <laughs> and you still haven't gone to the art direction, to the uh, 
So the basic thing is I can't – she, No, it's just like she's a funny person, but it's like hours of first thought theater. So it should have been called I Can't I can't Help It, This Woman Kills Me. I Can't Help It, Fran Leibowitz Kills Me, a love letter from Marty Scorsese. But the thing is he already did one. He did a he did a doc of her called Public Speaking like 10 years ago. Oh, which I enjoyed. Yeah, but he did yeah. it. <laughs> and also she's famous for – not famous, but she know, she says that she has writer's block. So why does she want a, an hour and a half? It sounds like it was an hour and a half special. <laughs> it was more. It's like a series. Are you kidding me? series, yeah. What do you mean it's a series? It's a fucking <laughs> one of those Netflix miniseries. No, you can't do that. Oh, they can. Netflix, you can. Yeah. Of course you can. I could have a story. But again, part. it's like I don't hate the woman. I think she's a funny woman. I think she's a good talk show guest. But this presentation of her as either super sage or super funny. Nobody need nobody. You can't undersell a comic enough. So if you put <laughs> right. the comic yes. <laughs> if you put it oh where do you get a do you like do you like Andy Kindler? Where do you see him from every But, I mean, it's like you watching the fucking progressive ads. He's into it so much. (laughs) Well, Marty... Oh, it was a very funny thing on Saturday Night Live was the guy doing his impression of Martin Scorsese and who was doing... I forgot who was doing Fran Leibowitz, but he just wouldn't stop laughing. He was doing Martin Scorsese at the, uh, like, award shows where he just laughs. No, he was doing him on this show. That's what they were referencing. (laughs) <laughs> I thought I No, told they were Susan, referencing this sh- Netflix show I'm talking about Are you about. kidding me? No <laughs> So he just laughs like a hyena? Yes <laughs> I have to see it now You do I have to see it You have to see it But is he in a chair across from her? He's off camera a lot of the time And there's a lot of times where they're showing clips of appearances for Live appearances they did together where That he, was one of my favorite impressions I've seen in a while <laughs> Well, you'll see that you'll now that you actually will understand it, you'll think it's even better. Stop talking to me like I have brain damage. <laughs> You're gonna feel bad when I die. I will. I assure you. No, you will. You will. You will. Don't even why, think about. Why it. is that in dispute? Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. I think it's sad that I would question it. It is on it your is ha- on your behalf. I think I've shown plenty. I know, but why is it would you know the thing is I would I think if I do die I made the old man soup more than once. Let's just say. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Is, 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 that, is that a code for something? No, it means I made. Oh, you made me soup. Yes. literally yes. soup. Yes. You didn't say old man soup though. That's not what you made me. You made me regular soup. I said I made the old man soup more okay. than once. It still sounds like you have a soup. What do you want tonight, Andy? Do you want the old man soup? Sure. Well, I mean, that's just by its nature, that's what you have. The matzo balls look tired. I'm just saying it's old man yeah. soup. It's old man soup. Don't make me chew. Oh, is it big pieces of chicken? No, everything is finely cut up. <laughs> it's minced. Everything is minced. It's my grandfather's don't make me chew soup. <laughs> it's as if a mama bird regurgitated it back into the bowl for you. <laughs> My grandpa did make what I came to love salads because he made everything he chopped up in a salad. You know, he chopped it up in front of you. Chopping oh, helps a salad. It really does. That's right. That's exactly right. And it never, it doesn't ever not work unless you're going to put it in the, you know, unless you want it to store somewhere. But if you're talking about, Farm to table. <laughs> you know, my act is completely farm to table. Yeah, I did. My act. That. Yes. My act, Josh. Yeah. Jesus. Gee, I know you've had a couple of hard days, but did you have your sense of humor affected? Oh. Do you wish you use expressions like it's a hard no more? Uh, I wish I had the opportunity <laughs> to. Oh, really? Like when? Like when will they come in? Don't do this yet. <laughs> Don't hard know me. It's too early for any of your shenanigans. You are, your case, but you are, you are, you're a hard no, Andy. I don't know what that means. That just sounds like another one of your cruel streets. I spelled, I spelled a K N O W in that sentence. I look. I can't take any more of the wordplay. It's so it requires so much thinking. It really does. Yeah. 
So what, do you want to just do balloon animals now? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I want you to describe when they, the Village Voice interviews you about the show, say you, you think it's the balloon animal of podcasts, and then people will just be like, oh, exactly. That's another thought spiral. Huh. There's no- <laughs> By the way, huh is better than wow. Wow! <laughs> Hey, you know, numbering, other people number their shows. They don't call them each the same thing, but they number their show. I think, I, I'm not saying we started that, but I like it. We did not start it, but I still no. think, I still think Tess show is funny. <laughs> That's... But it is funny. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny. It's a repetitive, it, it's, it's, it's funny for the reason that like a guy who wrote a book. No, I mean, it's funny, but then someone will go. The reason why it's funny because it gets it's funny and then it then it's not funny. Then it's funny again. Then it's not funny. Then it's hilarious. You know how people try to think of comedy like it's chess moves. Oh, you don't know how funny it was. The joke really pays off in twenty twenty seven when you realize it's like that Scorsese impression. <laughs> So in 2027, you open a note that says, Ta-da! Oh, Josh. Oh, Andy. Hey, that reminds me, is it time for our song? <laughs> <laughs> Were you in the waiting room? I mean, did you stay at the thing? There's no place. There's no outer. It's not like a regular people's hospital, right? They don't want you hanging around. No, it's all uh, it's all car-based these days at the vet's. So you come, you say, we're here. They come out, they grab your dog. Oh, and wow. And you, uh, you wait there. Like, That's the, cool. I mean, there was a lot of waiting in the car. Yeah. But it's way, yeah, better. Oh, I it's see. way better than the pet waiting room, especially with our fucking dogs who are nightmares at the vet. Have you had over the years, uh, not even necessarily funny stories, but just annoying stories where you, everyone's pulling back their animal? In the waiting room? Um, no, because I usually have my own. I usually, if I have both my dogs there, Clyde is cowering under the chair I'm sitting <laughs> in. I might mean to laugh. And Lucky is making squealy, basenji whine noises that are hurting the ears <laughs> of everyone within about a 50-foot radius to the point where I often <laughs> have to take her outside. It's very, very high-sounding? You've heard Lucky. It's like a, it's like a yeah, it's like arr, a... Arr. No, it's nothing like that. <laughs> Why don't you do it yourself then if you're so smart? No, I don't want to. First of all, did I ever show you that? Oh, I had a joke. Something with the Bazunji. What did you say? The Bazunji? Bazunji. Oh, have you tried any Bazunji wine? Uh huh. Because the Southern Bazunji. <laughs> Andy Kindler thinks he's funny. But on the other hand, he also thinks he's killing comedy. He's killing comedy. He's ruining friendships. He's ruining friendships. <laughs> He's stretching the idea of what a podcast uh, is. You know what that was, Andy? What? Your closer. The carefully chosen canines receive basic and specialized training, which toughens and prepares them for definite assignments under fire. Dogs of many breeds rally to the colors. The hunting dog is relieved of his other duties for the duration and begins the grim manhunt after the common enemy. A dog's natural instincts make cover and concealment easy lessons. Kill or be killed is again instinctive. He's fast and elusive, intelligent and willing. His hatred of the foe is complete. Loyalty and devotion to his job are commonplace with him. He asks for no reward. A pat on the back, any little acknowledgement by his master are sufficient. I'm sorry, I forgot my goddamn headset. Uh, can you, you know what would be a fun thing if you collected all of my excuses? Fun for who? For the people. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Maybe you should. You could do it. Maybe. You could, you could, you could uh, compile the excuse Taj. I'm already working on the greatest hits of my, uh, uh, I don't know. So, uh, can, uh, do, are you going to tell us what happened? Because I'm on ten, I'm on Tinder, I'm on Tinder, ten, tenter, ten, tenter hooks. Ending in dirty looks. Exactly. What happened? Uh, I mean, he, I kind of know what happened. But he's much. All the people. He's much better today. Uh, it's he, so great. His uh, legs are moving, and uh, he's peeing on his own. <laughs>
And uh, so, uh, yeah, we get him tomorrow. We'll pick him up tomorrow afternoon. And then we just got to kind of keep him still for like six fucking weeks. <laughs> right, right. Oh, you have to keep... It's the same... Well, it's not the same thing as before because now it's cleared the, the thing, right? Did yeah, they, now, they, now it's him recovering from surgery as opposed to his massive bulging disc. Yeah. Oh, what a couple of days, huh? Yeah. Well, at least and, I, uh, at least I had another plumbing thing thrown in too. So. <laughs> no. Yes. What is going on? What is happening? What, okay, know. what was the plumbing thing? Plumbing thing is something in my yard draining into the street at a uh, unpleasant rate that I thought uh, I had turned off my sprinkler system, so I figured, hey, well, it must be a city DWP thing. They right. came out and went, no, it's yours. So I got a, oh. I got a plumber coming in the morning now. Do they come? Do they do say it just like that? No, nah, sorry, sorry, Charlie. No, they were nicer than that. Oh, I hate it. Yeah, I hate he was, the whole he thing. He was very polite and you know, sort of, Certain. sort of sympathetic. Right. That's good. What yeah. do you want? What do? I, how do I feel of that? Uh, that doesn't really help. You still have to. Uh, is that like a thing where they have to excavate? Uh there's going to be some digging. When the plumber comes tomorrow, a funny thing to tell him or he, she is that now you're not going to charge me till you find the thing, right? <laughs> Boom! Yeah. They love it. Yeah. Well, you didn't love it. So. I didn't love it, no. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, felt, I felt more like the guy in your favorite commercial there going, no, no. Uh, no, no. Was I hashtagging? No. So, uh,. So that's coming out in the morning. Do you have a don't I don't need to know this now, but do you like your plumber a lot? Uh no one really does. I mean this guy this is my uh this is a more recent plumbing team that I've been working with and they've been good so far. Okay. That's good. Don't do the uh don't do the It was a Joel Mad parent. it was a Joel Madison wreck. <laughs> Wait, but now he has a guy that he works with, I think, as well. Well we're not gonna talk about it. This gets too specific and I'm sure Perouche and Daniel Schwartz, they I, have a schematic. I, I don't even know what you're talking about, so it would have to, I'm, I, you can exclude me as well. Well, I mean, if we start talking about the specifics of Joel, uh, they're going to map it out and everybody will know where everyone lives. And that's why I told <laughs> I you never understand. mentioned that. I, I just said he recommended a plumber to me. <laughs> no, but um, if, he, if they start to know who the plumbers are, they get to see how the sausage is made. <laughs> We can't give up any show secrets, Josh. That's all I'm saying. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying. I rarely do, but yeah. No, you do know what I'm saying. You just don't like it. That's a big difference. It's a big difference. It's a big difference hating somebody's guts and not understanding them because maybe they have an impediment. <laughs> right? Sure. Sorting all it right. all Sorting it all out now. Sorting it all out. Are you never one who went... Uh, like did like computer things. Computer must must stop. You know what I mean? Like if you're playing around with your friends, that does not compute. Ah, ah, ah. I'm a computer robot. Ah, ah, ah. That was my act. That was for seven, <laughs> for seventeen years. <laughs> well, Stephen Elton Yates, he brought out a blast from the past that was pretty cool. Kenner was the name of my give a show projector. It was not a blast from the past, but Kenner. I had forgotten that yeah. name. I guess I could have looked it you know, People go, oh, you looked it up. But I don't look anything up. You think I'm going to look up Twister? Yeah. Or look up electric football games? <laughs> That's when you haven't grown out of your childhood, right? Right, exactly. You know, don't you think there's people who collect? Here's my theory. I just came up with it. I just thought of it. Okay. The people who memorialize games, sometimes... I think it's from dissatisfaction from when they outgrew the game and they're trying to recapture that. And they have their friends over, look, it's a slinky. All right. And, or it could go towards Mr. Reminiscence Man, too. Yeah. Well, well, it's all one big ball. But I think if you're trying to recapture all of your childhood toys, chances are you took a wrong turn somewhere. <laughs> That's not what you tell people. You hope that through their hobby they find happiness. I suppose, like, but it's... Like Steve Panos, didn't he find happiness through looking around to those old pictures and things? No, he, found a, even, he found a business. I don't know what... Well, I, I should go to an analogy workshop. 
Yeah, maybe they could teach you. Yeah. And yeah, you start off with simple ones. This is like a boy. I'll tell you, it's so hot today. It's like a bowling alley with the pins down. See, no, Andy, you'll come back for the remedial class on the weekends. All right. Yeah. Well, are you? What time of tomorrow are you getting your doggy? Doggy. Uh, so, uh sometime after three thirty. Is this one of the things? Is this going to work like a hospital where if the right person on the wrong shift doesn't sign him out? They're going to keep him for another day. Is that what you're telling me? It could be one of those. We'll see. Oh man! So far, I've uh, I have a lot of love for these people, aside from the uh, actual totals. I didn't mean to laugh like that, but uh, the thing is, I don't understand. Here's the thing: I don't understand that there's a connection between human beings and other animals. Because if there was, why wouldn't they test viruses and stuff on them? Oh, okay. Well, I, I guess they do. But I just can't believe it. It's like, I, I see these people and, the, and they're doing the same kind of operation they would have on you. Yeah. But there's smaller instruments and, and shorter. You know what I'm saying? It's harder. Uh, but it's the, small. It's tiny. It's not, it's not that tiny, really. <laughs> well, if, I bet you if you had a pet salamander. And okay, I can't think of a small. What's the smallest uh, animal? The, the salamander is pretty small. Yeah, but like, is there a, uh, let's say you want a simple, could you order a simple dog? No problems. <laughs> you just never know. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It, it made, uh, uh, I'm not so sure now if we're going to get a dog. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? That was my wife saying hi while we're, uh, while I didn't even hear it. She sounded like a small child. Yeah. Allison, uh, m- much love to you. Now, why do I sound gone. like a, a DJ? Okay, tell. Okay, okay, change it. Allison, stop. I gave, Andy, I gave her a death stare and a big gesture towards the microphone, and she ran oh, off. Oh, Josh, what? Really? No, she's really your not. wife. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I actually, for a second, believe it, but I know you don't have that kind of of, of relationship. No, you know. <laughs> You sound extra, extra uh, hidden tonight. You're hiding things from me. No, I know I've, just, I've taken a beating this week, Andy. I'm, I'm worn down, I'm, and I'm, I'm, tired of, not, I'm tired of life right now. It's not like there's anything wrong with your electricity. <laughs> um, thank, car, thank goodness my car, old Bessie's working with that new deal I signed with Car Shield. <laughs> Car shield. Something must have happened. Either they be really learned how to fix old clunkers for a cheap price, and they're passing the savings on to the consumer, or there's a lot of poor people on their and their cars are on their last legs, and the only thing they can do is go with car shield. And that would have been me, Josh Elvis Weinstein. That's would have been younger Andy Kindler in a second. I would have gone up for that. Yeah, young Andy Kindler would be going. And when the engine light comes on, it's game over. <laughs> hey, it's me, Ice T. How's it going? What was that sound? I'm sure what he was if he's heard that while he was filming, he'd go, "What's that?" <laughs> Who's stepping on a cat? Oh, I thought you were a rap artist. That's Hulk. That's Hulk running, obviously. Huh? I play to all sides now, Josh. Yeah. Up and down. You know what's amazing? You probably were so tied up in the in this uh emergency that you, the joy of doing our podcast, you don't even remember how great it was as a as a elixir or a salve to ease your daily No, it uh, has, it, it, it hasn't been the balm I had hoped really so far this week. Did you just say I'm the bomb? Thank you. I think I'm pretty funny. <laughs> yes, you're the mentholated bomb. <laughs> that mentholated doesn't have the same wallop it used to have. <laughs> oh, do you know I wished I was in New York? You know, and that does make me miss my mom and sister. The weather, the the the, the simple fact that the only people I could talk to about weather ever was uh, New York. You know, I could share their winter joy 
because yeah. this was a good one. This was a nice wallop back there. Yeah. You like a good brought, wallop? Oh, yes, because I, I, I've told you many times, I, I associate snow only with positive things. I never had to work in it. I love the idea of the weather stopping what you had to do. Since I sold door to door, and if it rained, I didn't have to sell. Yeah. I love inclement weather. Well, I mean, you got the same thing going with disease. What's the problem? <laughs> because, okay, in the old days, I could call my friends. Like when I, when I was selling door to door, oh, it's raining. Let's smoke pot. And then I'll go. I mean, it was like a big party. It was a big party when it would happen. Now, you know, I've got a family. Now, now. you had nowhere to go. That's right. So now it's not, I'm not, I'm not, I actually, but you're, but, but what you're saying is, is right. Because one time I went to summer camp and I used to cry going to summer camp and they sent me for two months. And then by the time I left, I loved it. But one time I hated going swimming in the lake early in the morning. It made me sick as a dog. I hated it. We had like rain for like three weeks and we had no activities. And I was so fucking thrilled. Yeah. Every day. And everyone's like, aren't it, you sad? It was, <laughs> it was reverse hello mother, hello fada. Yes. <laughs> but that does indicate that there was some, A, something wrong with me. B, never addressed at the home front. Uh, and uh, I guess it's just the A and B. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with A. Yeah. Well, also, I guess the ability to swim is probably not, you know, it doesn't run in the, I mean... My mother could, my father could. Are you swim. not a strong swimmer? No, I, no, I never was. I mean, I can, uh, I can tread water. I can do the various strokes. Uh, I can do, I can lay on my back for yeah. an indefinite amount of time. So what's the problem? <laughs> That's pretty much uh, I can't, but I'm not a good swimmer. You know, I don't do the crawl stroke or ah. very well. So you can stay alive in water is what you're saying. I can stay alive in water, but I never, I never mastered it. And I used to have to swim in the lake. And I hated it. I hated everything about it. And I never got over that. Apparently. Ex except I like pool. You know, I like, I like a nice pool. Yeah. How about you? Were you, uh, was your family, uh, th did they call you the swimming Jews? They did. <laughs> Throughout the vaudeville circuit. Because I don't think of Jews swimming. That's probably just a misconception. I don't it think is. of Jews doing it anything. Is. Think of the uh, Catskills. <laughs> okay. I mean, now, you, now, uh, now I can see it. That's right. The Jews up there, and they, but they all—I thought that all they did was play uh, Simon Says up there in the water at Grossinger's. <laughs> There's one. I went up to that area after it was long gone. Yeah. Uh, to do a Who thing with TNT. That? Yeah. Yes, and it was really it was very you could not see anything about it from then. The the ones that were still uh, uh uh like around yeah like where they shot Dirty Dancing it's it's a it's a it's a graveyard up there it mm. is I've seen photos of the uh, you know how they do all those decay photos yeah where, yeah where people break into places and I've seen actually all, I don't I've know seen... what you and what that means so explain that to me I don't want to oh no but you, you think here's the reason why you don't want to explain it to me. Because normally I'm just asking just to fuck over with you. But I actually wanted to know what they were. Yeah. Uh, people break into uh, places that are uh, abandoned and uh, take photos. Oh, like they stage parties and stuff? or No. They just take pictures of the various levels of decay of these places. Oh, like places where that have been where people have been living... Because of the current recession and everything, or no? The current... See, I didn't want to explain this to you, and it's not going well. Hmm. Why don't you? You know, one thing you could do, like an abandoned resort, for example. Mm hmm. People just go in there and take pictures to show you. They don't. How about if they don't? I think. <laughs> I believe you. Are you? Are you? Are you? Are, are you? Okay. Uh, I'm. I'm at a loss as to uh, why I even got myself in this maze. Maybe I'm amazed. That's not good. This is a terrible show so far. I really got to say. I don't care. That's not my <laughs> responsibility. It is not my responsibility. You gotta look inside your own soul, Mr. Spooky. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing fine. Uh, it's been a tough three days. What did you want? You wanted to be in the mood to gab? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm not. Of course. But look, we're 21 minutes in. 
if we can get over this. I hump, wish. Oh, 20 minutes in because I'm always late. Not even. Oh, I actually have a elapsed time. Yeah, it says <laughs> in the thing. <laughs> I never knew that. Boy, what, what will they think of next? <laughs> well, it's not what they would think of next, Andy. They've already thought of it. Boy, I'm, this this technology is really coming along. No, it was there, and you just noticed it, you stupid, stupid, uncoordinated Jew. That's how I talk to myself. Yeah. Not really. I'm very pleased with myself when no one's around. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a weird time period. Uh, are you excited about the Super Bowl, or are you not excited about the Super Bowl? I don't really give much of a shit about it. I'll watch it, yeah. I think. I do. I'm excited about it. Yeah. Because I want to see, oh, God, I want to see uh, uh, Tom Brady lose. I want him to lose in an embarrassing way. I want him to lose in, to the point that he realizes his politics are bad. <laughs> and um, so I think it's going to be good. Plus, I love Kansas City. It's an exciting team with Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, your sport, which I've decided is well, I have this I mean, Basketball seems to be the only sport you really get the juices flowing for. That's correct, I would say. And they ha- they've just started, right? Uh they're uh, yeah, they're about twenty uh, percent through the season now. And there's no and there's no bubble. No bubble. But there's more illness. Uh there's been some postponed games. I don't like that they have these new versions of the different illness coming in. I don't like it one bit. No, I don't either. I just I barely got used to the first one. I thought they'd be coming for me now with my uh, vaccine, but no, no. It's not. I, I may be. Now they're saying the summer. No, they're waiting until the Ashkenazi strain <laughs> comes your way. Well, the Ashkenazis have always been a strain. I wish I knew more about uh, the Jewish. I wish I knew more about everything. Well, first of all, geography. Yeah. I really can't find my way out of a uh, premise. paper bag. Oh. A premise. Well, the premise, it's always easy when you got people rowing with you. Ah? All right. That was a joke at your expense. Uh, I felt it. Ouch. No, you don't. There's nothing you can do. You're not going to be affected negatively. You're not going to be affected positively. You're in the pocket. Yeah. You're in the personality pocket. Am I? I don't know, Josh. Yours or I'm mine? just trying to <laughs> just, just trying to get through life. What the fuck do I know? <laughs> hey, I wrote this down. My shoulder hurts from punching down. Sounds like something's there. Not for you though. Your whole your whole thing is punching up, isn't it? I know, I know. It's so so stupid. It's like uh, it, it has to be from punching up. I separate. Well, then it makes me look like a hero. <laughs> it's just a stupid joke. It's just not a joke. A lot of times I'll go, boy, that was a bad joke. And, and, and I didn't even get to the point where I twisted it in a funny way. Yeah. I just want it to be funny on its own. Because you misled me many years ago by telling me. That, Andy, you have a future. No, you said, what you do, it's not funny. You try it again. Not funny. Then you try it again. Eh, it's okay, funny. And then an hour to two hours later, we're all rolling in the aisle and uh, and we're breaking through. I don't know. I couldn't be more bored with my own voice yeah. if I was was my own voice. <laughs> if I was my own voice. Yeah. If I was microbes, I couldn't be more bored with my voice. <laughs> I don't know. How do people do like Bill Bird does a does a podcast by himself? How is that possible? I don't know. Jen Kirkman does too. Jen Kirkman, she's I could see it with her. <laughs> no, I, mean, I really, compliment? I really, she, yes, because she, yes, because she is able more than most people I know to just start talking and it to be interesting. But I don't know. I think it's, gets lonely. I would think we get lonely every week. Yeah. And also, it wouldn't be as much fun as we have here, right? Ooh. No, I mean, that's the thing I like about it. I feel about this show, it's like an old pair of shoes that you put on. <sighs> I told you I didn't do well with the analogies. <laughs> <laughs> like an old pair of shoes that Goodwill won't take. Yes. I love that. The favorite, My favorite one is from the Seinfeld episode. Is it the shrinkage episode? The man, like a, man, like a Jewish man 
ordering his soup. Something like that from a Seinfeld yeah, episode. I don't know. I have a uh, very non-encyclopedic recollection of Seinfeld. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't have a encyclopedia, but I don't have a lot. Well, you probably remember MASH. You probably have uh, family trees that show, because there were so many different MASHs. There was the first group. And then yeah, I'll, go, I'll, go, I'll go mash to mash with anyone, but uh, that's pretty good. Let me see if I can fool you. All right. All right. He was good with radar type things. Very good with Ray. He always seemed to know almost like a radar. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was going on in the outfit? Igor. <laughs> Igor was my go to name in monster movies. Did you know when you were a kid, well, you did because you were probably brighter at a younger age, but did you know that Igor was a, a Russian name? Yeah. I thought it was like a name from monster movies. Igor. My dad used to use well, it. Well, it's both. <laughs> I know, but my dad, yeah, because I grew up in the time period of Mission Impossible where all the villains were Russians. You you don't know. Don't push me, American. I can't even do that. I couldn't even do phony Russian well. Give me a little Russian from the uh, back in the in the sixties, from the man from Uncle days or something. Uh, we are go. We are very much <laughs> looking forward to torturing you, Mister Uncle. <laughs> and you know what? And loving it. <laughs> oh, I think I mixed up two shows. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I just realized that I watched the man from Uncle, and probably never really got it. Because it wasn't that kind of tongue-in-cheek, Yeah, too? but you then you watched Get Smart and took it personally. <laughs> uh, see? <laughs> laugh, laugh, laugh. <laughs> then it hits down. It hits down deep in your gazungis. Yeah, well, my, your, arm, here, my, my, I go, <laughs> arm, my arm hurts from punching down. <laughs> I laugh and I go, but it's true. You're stupid. <laughs> and you wouldn't even know if you were stupid. Because you'd be too fucking stupid to know, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Why would your father? Why did your father hate you? Your father could have given, you, thrown you a bone. Could have pretended you were like an Einstein. Why don't you go no. watch some Get Smart? Huh? You want me to watch a TV show? No. no. <laughs> Why? I love this depressing picture of your father, of my father, not your father. I wish, I wish my father and your father could meet somehow. Maybe they are meeting. They have a better yeah. shot of it now than before, probably. <laughs> I don't know. We're all from the same thing. We're all an expression of, oh, I fell down. To, I didn't even tell you. I fell down. I fell down hard today. Really? Uh, yeah, I fell down. I fell down stupidly and good. Stupidly and solidly. Okay. So we have our food delivered. Yeah. And so we were getting a delivery from Costco. I don't know who delivers from Costco. It could be Instacart. I don't know. But all I heard in my dumb head was delivery. Delivery's coming. Delivery. So I see an Amazon Prime uh, truck in front. Yeah. And I don't want him to go away. Why would he be going away? He's not, First of all, he's not the truck I was waiting for. Right. And he wasn't going away. Wow. But I thought, oh, oh, I'll lose it. And I ran down the stairs, the concrete stairs, and I went slam. I think it was one of those things where uh, my my knees gave out again. And I went kneeling, and I went boom on the pavement. And then the guys looking at me oddly. I'm going. Wah! Wah! He is both asking me if I'm okay yeah. and if I know which unit number five is at the same time. <laughs> same time. Are you sure? Oh, like are you. Okay? He wasn't just checking your uh, faculties. <laughs> no, it was so weird because... How many units am I holding up? <laughs> <laughs> so I said to him, follow... First of all, before we established that it wasn't even from my apartment, Yeah. Uh, I said, follow me to him. Because oh. he was coming into the building. <laughs> follow me. Nice. So he starts bringing stuff in there. Right. And I say, and he walks in, I go, I say, put it right. <laughs> I just see how horrifying this must be for a person who doesn't know what my diseases are. I say, put it down. I say, just put it down right there. That's fine. Thing. I don't want to, you know, put him out. He goes, 
is this five? <laughs> <laughs> We're in the garage. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what a nice guy. He wants to put it near my parking spot. <laughs> so I say, come on, come on. He's, he has nothing. To, he knows I'm injured, bleeding, <laughs> right. and I'm walking and in the head. He thinks you're a little crazy now. Yeah. yeah. He goes, well, I say, well, what's the matter? <laughs> I go, he goes, he finally said, like, is your unit five or something? I said, oh, no, 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 no. And then, but then I was able to help him because we were by the elevator. Ah. And then. So then as he left. So you saved it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't save it. Right. So as he left, he did say to me, are you sure you're okay? And I think he meant it more than the knee. Right. <laughs> so you went to your knees going downstairs. Right. And so, so I so saw you then, So you, then you flopped onto your face. No, I flopped on right onto my knees, like as if I was uh, kneeling before God. But on downstairs or had you hit the bottom? I had, what I didn't understand was, that I, I think I missed a step is what I think it happened. Probably so. And I, I, but I thought I'd like, oh, oh, did you, did that thing happen that used to happen in clubs? But I think I missed a step, in which case, oh, I, I don't thought really you know meant, what happened. I thought you meant emotional development when you said I missed a step. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, but so then my knees cement, my, and also I was wearing shorts. Okay, so was there some skinning as well as bruising? Yes, there's been skinning. Oh, and luckily I don't know. But did the knee hit a stair or the or the side? Did he? The, no, the knee hit the ground at the bottom of the stairs. Okay, they they which I guess you could call the landing. Is even if it's outside? Oh well, when it's you, it's the landing apparently. <laughs> Oh, it hurts so much. It hurts so much. Yeah. And I've been, and I know that I've been so lucky. Like I touch right now, it hurts so fucking much on both knees. But I really am convinced that I didn't do any structural damage. But I will if I don't slow down. Yeah. I don't want to die, Josh. No, not like that, especially. That's the way I'm going to die. <laughs> Reaching for a thing out the window, a quarter. Reaching into traffic for a quarter. Right. It's going to be embarrassing. Trying Jewish. To salt the tail of a bird. <laughs> See, now didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you when I told you, you just, just stick with me, kid. We got 12 more minutes of dynamite out of this baby. And that's, and that's when you came up with I've fallen and I can get up. That's where I came. Well, no, I didn't. <laughs> No, I, I think yeah, that must have been in my mind. I can't. Uh, I wonder where I, why I was thinking about falling jokes. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. I've fallen. Oh man! Since I started putting on the videos, oh god, I have offers coming. First of all, I keep getting these the same guy from Lincoln. He's wanting to. He wants to nail a date down with somebody. This guy from Lincoln. Lincoln. Yeah. Nebraska. Like in April. In April. Yeah. He wants people to come to his club in Lincoln in April. Yeah. And then the guy from Seattle, I get a call from him. Oh, Andy, I'm, we're back up at 25%. What, aren't we like a canary in a death mine? Are they paying full price? No, no, I'm sure they're not. First of all, I didn't get full price to begin with in either of those rooms. And Lincoln was a <laughs> low ball gig. In other words, like, Andy, at the end of the weekend, if everything goes well and you uh, stay on the meal plan, you order off the one side of the venue, you could take home fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, you could take. What price is good enough to get COVID on your trip out of town? Uh, I don't know, but it doesn't have four digits. I know that much. <laughs> it's just crazy. <laughs> you know, you see those actors. Oh, Jim Carrey. Uh, why is yeah, he's working, they're working for real money, taking risks for real money. Right. And they probably have more professionals than are at the, at the comedy tomb in uh, Houston. Hey, don't worry about it, Andy. We clean the tables between shows. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Once a week, whether they need them or not. No, 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 it's good. It's good. We're going to open up. The guy in Seattle, he already said 25% capacity. Well, what am I going to come out with? What am I going to? So, right. in other words, if I did do that, it'd be like, two. Are you coming? A hundred dollars in your pocket, 
and you went and swapped air with a person in the middle seat. Yeah. For three hours. Yeah. I, 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 do you think that we're, we're unusual though, right? There's a lot of people are like, don't even, still don't even think at this point, oh, I wouldn't get on a plane. Oh, I wouldn't do this. I mean, I, I, you're no, taking I your life in your hands. I don't think we're unusual in that regard at this point. That's true. But I also understand comics having to fucking go work too, you know? They don't, what about their brother? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know it's a terrible thing, but, uh, it's also, it's funny to me that the people who could be squeaky wheels when things were regular could also be even squeakier. <laughs> can you, can you please? Like, I, I retweeted about a club, and then uh, Lori, Lori came on and said, I've never even played that. She, she pointed out, I don't even play that club. Why am I, <laughs> why am I helping the Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase? What, what were you, I don't understand. Uh, they, they're, they're out of business, so they're trying to reopen or something. Ah, so I retweeted. Hey, we're in trouble. Give us a hand. Well, that, you retweet. Know, that was nice. I can't hurt. You're helping the biz. <laughs> you, that's the thing. I don't take enough credit for how much I give back. No, you don't. You know. Oh God! So you're gonna hang up on me, or you're gonna you can control me to hang up on you? And if I just, I, I'm right here. I could have just ended it right then. I could have gone, and he would have been like, ah. <laughs> Kindler thought he was going to get me. I don't understand what's going on with me, Josh. Maybe you can uh, you can figure it out. I, you sh- I should be helping. I should be, first of all, do you need anything? Can I get you anything? What kind of a neighbor am I? Yeah. I could have helped you in your problem. That's not your, that's not your jam, though. <laughs> well, could you wait a little? Could you be a little bit less quick <laughs> with the, oh, you're... Oh, no, that's not you, Andy, being nice and generous with your. No, no. But how about when the mo- when the money's down, when the, when the chips are down? Uh, you how br- about that? You bring dip. You know what? I laugh. You may fake laugh at that kind of thing. I, I will laugh until I'm 100. I would laugh if I had Parkinson's and uh, dementia or in both. I would laugh at that joke. Yeah. Well, okay. That's the one I'll bring. <laughs> no, I, I no. The kind of person I just want to tell you, people think they know who you are. You've already written half of my eulogy because you've been running it by me. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, is this too harsh? What do you mean too harsh? For when your husband, I'm not saying he's dead now, but would it be okay if I said at his funeral jokes about him never getting anywhere career wise? Well, he's not dead yet, Josh. Well, yeah, and, and it's not like there's going to be a crowd. You, do you think that would be sad? I wouldn't get a shandling like a. I wouldn't get a shandling like a attendance, right? Ah, uh, you might. You might. <laughs> You're slightly needling me, and the basis of the needle is how many people would come to my funeral, right? And you're slightly. No, no, no. There might be a good turnout, and you you could go with maybe there'll be a nice spread. Yeah, I, I would make definitely sure. would go with free food for sure. Free food. Yeah. Maple people will go to make sure I'm dead. You know what they say, Andy? Give the people what they want. <laughs> in hospitals supported by Humane Society, poor dogs are treated free in the clinic. But rich dogs must pay hospital rates. And in addition, the veterinaries fee. So, give me the update on my on little Clyde. Clyde is home. Aww. He's on uh, about six weeks of basic, basically bed rest. <laughs> that made me laugh for some reason. I don't know why, but it made me laugh. Uh, so, he's, uh, he's drugged up in a fenced-in little corner of the living room right now with a big old scar on his back. And, uh, and that has nothing to do with the surgery, I hear. Uh-huh. Get it? Uh huh. No, I said get it. I uh-huh. didn't say uh-huh. uh huh. I said get it. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> and does he have good drugs that we'll get later? Uh, no. Do Do they have crossover drugs like that for pain? Uh, sure. Yeah, no, he was on fentanyl at first. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> he was not on fentanyl. He is. And in fact, he's still wearing a fentanyl patch. Will you stop saying that? 
I thought they don't, fentanyl's terrible, I thought. Uh, no, abuse of fentanyl is terrible. I ju- the All actual, I wanted to the do was The actual medical chew. use for fentanyl is actually pretty uh, effective. No, but I just wanted to chew on the patch, just okay, to see. Well, yeah. I didn't know. No, I thought for some reason that it was one of those drugs that they didn't... I knew they needed it in extreme cases. Obviously, all those drugs they do, but that's so that's so good. Yeah, so that comes off tomorrow, and they were very much like, don't touch the patch, don't put the patch anywhere near the kids or the other dog. Do you have <laughs> like, kids there? Uh, no, they were just you know covering their bases. Well, they should know what you have at these prices. <laughs> yes. It was very wow. much like resolving a kidnapping, really, because you pull up. You know, into the parking lot, and you call a number, and they're like, okay, we'll send you this link where you deposit your money in a Swiss bank account, and then we will release the hound to you. Right. There's no way that we, unless they saw that, you know, because you have a, you're not a shady character, but, you know, you have a lot of debt. No. So that's, uh, that's so great. And uh, is he cognizant? Whatever uh, that means. Is uh, he ambulatory? Is he cognizant? No, he's not ambulatory. <laughs> Do you want some more words you can't handle? <laughs> yeah. Is he? Uh, he's he's. You know. Did you intubate him? Did you intubate him? <laughs> Josh, tell me if it's true. You intubated. We're yourself. not that close. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, yeah, no, he was very happy to be home. He was ecstatic to see. I think mostly Allison. <laughs> so he was, you know, howling with uh, dog excitement noises for most of the ride home. When you say, is it just that? He loves Allison more? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's safe to say. And does Lucky love you more or it doesn't work that way? Uh, You know, I think if we had to really, you know, pin her down, she might go my way. (laughs) But it's for purely mercenary reasons. Well, that's what they say with dogs. I'm a softer touch. (laughs) But but from minute one, uh, Clyde has uh, just adored Allison, so... (laughs) That's <laughs> so cool. I just wish she'd warm up to him. <laughs> Wouldn't that be terrible? <laughs> she doesn't like dogs. What are so, we going to do? So, yeah, it's, you know, I'm very glad he's home. He's, uh, his back legs aren't uh, fully functional yet, but there's there's high hope that he, he will rebound fully. But in the meantime, we're using like a belly sling to help him walk. Now, the fact that this is a similar surgery, this is the kind of stupid things I think of when I have nothing, no answers, and I can't bug you. Yeah. So I think of things like, if he if he had the same operation you had, could he also have pain after it, but not tell you about it because he's a dog? You know what I mean? Or is it they? Or he would be more comfortable with the pain because he's a dog? Well, he's clearly more comfortable than he was before the surgery. Now, I make a nice living. Okay. Oh, you can already tell he's more comfortable. That's oh, yeah, great. because That's I can great. pick him up without him yelping, you know. But um, in other words, he can't say to me, Andy, I don't like how it went, and I'm going to have to go to the front next time. He can't say that to me. Uh, no, but one can infer from his behavior that things are going well or not. Thank you for using infer properly, because so many people don't know that the speaker implies and the listener infers. And if you get it wrong... I start to judge you, and five minutes after that, I it snaps back at myself. What kind of disgusting pig are you well, that you are constantly seeing whether people you because you don't think you're smart, you have to you have to bug people on whether they used infer properly. Yeah, well, and you're also the guy who's asked the phrase "What are you implying in your head?" more than anybody in the world. <laughs> also. And what, what am I, I'm inferring much worse than you're implying. Generally, yes. No, you're, you're pretty, you're pretty, you're an asshole, Andy. I, and I infer, he said I'm Hitler, right? I don't Did he like not the say implications I'm, of that. He said Jewish Hitler. That's yeah. what, All right. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that is very nice. I want to clarify, okay, so uh, have you updated me on your doggy? I don't know. Do you feel like you know what's happening? Uh, I feel good. But if you want to say uh, if there's any other humorous anecdotes, when you picked up the dog, you look, you saw a lady across, anything that will flesh it out and make the listeners feel like that was a good story. Mm, no, you know, I think I'll stand pat. Okay. So I want to uh, 
I actually made notes. Uh, Good boy. <laughs> and I dropped my pen. Look, you can't get to me anymore. I just want to let you know that. All right, so here's... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Remember we were talking about my sister's songs a few weeks ago? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. And you said, I think you said, fuck, your, your sister was a fucking hack. Yeah. She, if she wanted to be a musician, she should have fucking become a musician. Right. Shouldn't she have? Yeah. That's when your knees were on my shoulders, and that's all I remember. And you were suspending spit upon I was my doing face. that drool and suck it up thing, yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't even know. That shows you're an actual bully. No, it shows, know about the suck it it shows I was bullied by an older brother. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Oh, I hate the idea of it. My brother was so much bigger than me, it would have seemed ridiculous to pick on me yeah. physically. Yeah. He did it mentally. Sure. So anyway, what I wanted to say was, uh, again, I'm biased towards my sister. I have no problems with anything people liking it or not liking it. But I just wanted to add the thing that she had written all of those songs by the time she was 16. Yeah. And I'm sad about the fact that I just feel like whatever she could have done with her life, you know, all of us kids have such, and I'm, I'm not going to blame my parents. I mean, they did it. They did it, Josh. They did it. But, you know, none of us had good self-esteem. Yeah. We had terrible self-esteem. All of us did. But you would think, if I, you, you, sometimes you think you wish I had m more lower self esteem, right? Oh, uh, well, I'm working on it. Your rhythm is good today. <laughs> it's like you're not, you're a curmudgeon on the go. Yeah. That's how yeah, I see it. Exactly. I'm a <laughs> casual curmudgeon. I'm a man Can I get you another drink? my life for a week of crushing responsibility. <laughs> uh, okay. So that was that one. And then the other one was that I, I don't know if I told you that I, I felt, I'm okay, but I felt like an idiot again. Did I tell you that? You did, yeah. Okay, okay, good. It still hurts. It does it? But there's no structural damage. Is it the the knees where it's hurting? It's yeah. I, I went right on the kneecap. Yeah. And it's very painful, but there's no uh, no swelling or anything. It's all all bruising. The kneecap did its job. <laughs> they, uh, what was Susan saying about the knee? It's the only thing that has not not really connected to anything, the knee bone or something. It's like floating around. Yeah. I know I'm not saying it right. I know you're probably judging me. I know that I'm a bad person. I know I should be shot. I know I voted for Marjorie Taylor Greene. Good God, sir. What are you inferring? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm done with the agenda on my end. I think I won this part. Are you scoring round by round or just by the week? Uh, I go week by week, for sure. Okay, let me know. I think I'm ahead. I'm sure. definitely ahead. Sure, in your head. You, I have to say that some of your insults have been very pedestrian this week. <laughs> 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 Just basically you going, you're terrible. You're, you're, you're boring, Andy. Yeah. You're horrible. Yeah. Well, that's, well, that's what I hear. Yeah. No, I mean, I think it's been the essence. Of what I've been saying. I can't You're so it. comfortable. <laughs> it's the comfortable, casual curmudgeon. Well, you yeah, know, yeah, you look it's you the, look good. It's the resignation that I have to be here. <laughs> <laughs> like my natural rhythm wouldn't have had me have three long chats this week, probably. <laughs> He's the casual curmudgeon. So Yeah, you know, yeah. If I can't yes, bring if I can't bring my genuine self to the table, what are we doing here? I guess is how oh, I'm you know what? Thank thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's what I want to say. No, I hear you. Right. I, I forgot what I was going to add on to it, but it couldn't be good. You know, um, you know. Oh, yeah. I was going to do the casual commercial. Hey, look, you're, you look horrible. You know, you know you're doing well, Andy. If, if I well, you mean horrible. Can I freshen you a drink? <laughs> <laughs> the casual curmudgeon. Sure. <laughs> you're doing a good job of something nobody needs. What's that, being a casual curmudgeon? No, I'm just that's so casual curmudgeon sort of Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want a curmudgeon that's a, that's a nice curmudgeon, too. No. What's the point? Exactly. I'm feeling pretty then good. Then you got Fran Lebowitz. <laughs> I just love the idea that it's all notebook-style first First thought draft. theater all the way across Martin Scorsese's bow. Well, I think she's great, and I think that that impression was, I got to see the thing, but, uh, you know, no one should forget that she actually supported Steve Forbes for president. And it was, I'm not lying about it because I know I, I saw it. I believe you. 
And and I don't uh, think she's. I don't think there's anything about her that really stands for anything in particularly good. But she was uh, she was uh, uh, excited about him. Sure. <laughs> and I, I don't know if you're aware, but he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, but you Steve know how Forbes. annoying taxes are. <laughs> Oi, don't get me started on taxes. Yeah, but I love the, the idea that... The simple 10%, I understand it. <laughs> but also, that their list is completely based on whatever the billionaire that they think says is worth it. They took Trump's numbers, just took his numbers, and, and they cut it down by a half or whatever. Right. And that was still wrong. Yeah, well... I'm steamed about Trump. It's almost like he hadn't been lying about his wealth for the previous 35 years. Yeah, public. yeah. You couldn't see it coming. Josh, that's where you're wrong. You couldn't see it coming. Uh, Nobody could have possibly imagined that this birther ignoramus, if that's still an okay word, was going to be a bad president. This you is, couldn't tell. This is exactly why I've deplatformed the My Pillow Guy impression. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you hear about David? you is, joke and you joke and you joke, and then they're fucking president. Well, is that David Hogue or ha Hogue? David Hogg, oh, yeah. H O G G, he's yeah. going to make a uh, progressive pillow. Yeah, see, let's 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 take the politics out of pillows. Come on, people. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's where you would take your stand. Seriously, Look, there's just no. I don't like it no left reason. or right. There's no reason to politicize pillows. <laughs> well, the problem is there is you have short term memory foam. Or like <laughs> I where I worked on that on Twitter. Yes, I feel like um, I feel it. You feel that it's been done before, yeah. right? I felt like, how you doing? How you doing, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> I like how Brian Williams refers to him as maker of a chopped foam pillow. <laughs> you know, the thing is, Brian Williams is both funny and both tries too fucking hard and gets on your nerves. Yeah. He, he can be funny. He, oh, yeah. But no. then he's so impressed with his humor. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a little bit presentational. Yeah, he does like the, the Democrats... What could go wrong there? That type of stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he leans a little too heavy on droll. Uh, what does he lean too heavy on? On droll. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I remember talking to Zach Galifianakis about doing doing some interview with Brian Williams, and he said, and he said, it's just like you've never seen anybody who more doesn't want to be in what he's doing and wants to be a comedian. Yeah, no, he wants He to. really wants it. He wanted to be Letterman more than Brokaw. Right. Wait, did Brokaw want to be Letterman? No, I mean, he wanted to be Letterman more than he ah, wanted more than to Brokaw. be Brokaw. Ah, more than Brokaw. That's right. Yeah. Well, Brokaw hasn't ended up... I mean, I, I mean no no offense, but he's got, I he's got some... Don't, I don't know what you're thinking about, Andy. <laughs> he's very crotchety. Uh, he's mad at AARP people uh, for taking charge. I've been accused of being crotchety before, but I... I... I'm trying to find a word with L in it. Why are you so? I'm going to give you some more. I'll give you some more. Why are you so angry at the at the people on AARP for advocating? I don't understand why you're that, that's your enemy now. Are older people? I don't. Help. I don't want to be all lumped into a group with a bunch of elderly people. Simply See, be, it works. Simply it because. works. <laughs> it works. First of all, the level of uh, that people love in our podcast. You, you know, you get anywhere near it. People are jumping in the streets. Right. It's, it's the ballpark impressions of J. Elvis Weinstein. Yeah, you don't have, there's not a lot of Elon Gold people here. No. No, if I get the zip code, I'm, I'm gold. <laughs> All right, do you want to go to some questions here? Sure, right. sure. I'd love, I would, I'd love to. Dana Schwartz wants to know, I'd like to hear Andy repeat back to Josh what he was told about GameStop last week. Mm. I, he did say something to me about GameStop. Wait, now I, I can't really remember what games. Oh, that's where you invest all the you, you buy the horrible. It's like the current blockbuster, right? That store. Uh, sort of. You you don't remember the whole stock thing? No. Okay. No. All right. The doctor says. All right, Dana Schwartz. That the feeling should <laughs> return Schwartz. to. Point proven. All right, there. But the doctor says that the the feeling should come back in my brain, but the memory probably will not come back. Uh, the problem. Hey, okay, John. Sous vide uh, has a problem, mm. apparently, oh. that uh, I neglected to read his former question from last week. 
So he, oh, no. he's retweeted it and said, this question didn't make it to the show. Where did I fail? What is the formula for success? I want oh. my situation to improve if you catch my drift. Did he actually write, if you catch my drift? He did, yes. Well, that's a little overselling of a bit that we already yeah. know. So his question, I guess we can address the question. I don't remember. Well, we could, I don't his remember drift, actively sure. passing it. I'm sure it was just a scrolling error. But the question no, is, what is, meant it. what is freedom? Is true freedom possible? Oh, sure. Sure. There's the, there's yeah. the philosophical uh, stew free, that people come for. Free your mind instead. Yeah. No, I mean, it's one of those questions where if I say, yeah, then I've got our black audience on, on me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know what I just said. There. I don't either. I would my say, black I would say in, in, in my personal nutshell, I would say freedom is the ability to make choices in your life that are based on happiness rather than necessity. I, that is not only apt. It's succinct. It's uh, it's it's fantastic. I would put it on a plant. Is it a planter? Sure. Or a, sure. Planters. So are what do they popular. call them? <laughs> it's a pattern of a planter. You make the pattern on a planter. Like a macrame sort of thing. Are you talking about? Yeah, what or? do they call those? You, you know, home sweet home. Like a oh needlepoint. Is that what you're going for? Yes, ah. but they call it a planter. I don't, no, I don't think they do, Andy. <laughs> I know a lot of stuff. That, I think, you know, you're, I think you're thinking of a sampler, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. But yes, that's it. <laughs> it's a Whitman sampler. Yes, it is. I don't even have enough intelligence to say, I know a lot about stuff that means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still going to throw it out there. I know very little about everything, even the stuff. So I have nothing to No, actually, I'm hiding my intelligence. That's good. Keep Under that. a bushel. Exactly. <laughs> What's a bushel? <laughs> I thought that while you were saying it. <laughs> uh, if you could tell me what a bushel is, that would help. I, I was going to go there. Uh, Tweet Bahara 3 says, uh, is the rumor true that you guys are starring in a remake of Midnight Cowboy? I can see the poster now. That's all the work he's going to do on that question? <laughs> That's, it. That's all he's got. <laughs> That's... What do you mean? You could, if you could see the poster now, uh, tweet Bahara. Why wouldn't you tell us what it was so we I could think do it? Would probably uh, be us impression. instead of John Voight and Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> I can, uh, okay. see, I can see it now too. <laughs> I'm walking. Hey, Josh. Yeah. I'm walking here, Josh. Get the fuck out of my way. I'm walking here. Who are you doing? I'm doing Dustin. <laughs> Doing Dustin Hoffman. Oh, I just, oh now I, I just it. now I can't hear it now. Okay, let's take the scene that uh, we're in the in the bus to Florida. Okay. Okay, that's you ready? Your, that'll be your best one. Okay, you ready? Yeah. I think I'm going to die here before we get to Florida oh, in a I very thought, embarrassing I way. You're going to do it after. <laughs> I think I'm going to wet myself, which will seem sad. Why do they need to make that movie sadder? <laughs> I, I don't know. Was that a brief window, Josh, where you could sell and then he dies? <laughs> Rated X. And then he says we did it, and then the and then the baby, not baby, whatever you, we blew it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me go back. Oh, they already have a good ending to that movie. Yeah. Hey, let's go back there. I always let's thought. I actually thought that was a happy ending because he didn't have to go to Florida. <laughs> What's a Jewish woman's favorite wine? Do you know? I want to go to Miami. It's 1962. It's 1962. It's, and this Diet Pepsi on my floor. Reservations. Sweet Bar of the Three is back. <laughs> Hopefully with another gem. Yeah. I can see it now. He says it's in, like it's in front of me. He says, in all 995 shows, I've never asked for a James Mason or Jackie Mason, Martian <laughs> Mason, or a Free Mason, or a Mason Dixon, just for the record, healing vibes to Clyde. Now, see? He won. I don't know if there's a prize, but he, that, uh, he, he knocked it out of the park with that letter, uh, with that question. So that's why he couldn't work on the other one to make it good. That's right. <laughs> Wad was blown. 
Seth Dick the Third is here to say Mama Dick the Third loves kids in the hall. She's always saying, I'm crushing your head. And <laughs> saw that Andy worked with Scott Thompson on the show about a Canadian wrestler. She forgets the name, silly Mama Dick the Third. She thinks huh. the whole gay thing with him is an act, is it? <laughs> well, with the gay thing with the wrestler? With Scott oh, Thompson. Oh, no, Scott Thompson. That's yeah. true. That's true. If you talk to him off stage, it's unbelievable. Because he's like, yeah, Andy, how you doing, man? Are you doing the Scott Thompson tonight? He goes, absolutely, buddy boy. Absolutely. Hey, you want to get a brewski after the show? I'm sure, Scott. And then next second, hello, America. <laughs> <laughs> See, within that bit, I got to do a stereotypical voice. Hello, big. Sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you, you got the, me. I gave you the contemporaneous chuckle. That was good. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> take out the take out the, the more bitter sure. <laughs> right. I'll see how it plays. Uh, Mozart 2 says, I might need two tweets. I have a too long story involving Thought Spiral and your two, as far as I know, prior conversations about coincidence and whether or not they mean anything or what they mean and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was the preamble. Got it. On last week's show, recorded. Pulled by Jen Saki. Get it? Uh, yes, I did get it. Because they asked That's her like the so White many House questions. Press secretary. Yeah, but they ask her a lot of questions, yeah. too. Okay, you go ahead now. I do think her name does sound like a martial art. I don't know if I mentioned that. <laughs> like what? Like a martial art. <laughs> My name? Her name. Oh, yeah. Jinsake! <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you make me do your racist joke? <laughs> Jinsake! Oh, you know a chicken. Hey, did I tell you about chicken? Ah, uh, chicken. And make a very bad house pat. <laughs> Have you seen Mickey Rooney from Breakfast at Tiffany's? Ah, so. Okay, don't. It's all. I'm making a point. All right. I'm, just, I'm sorry. I was distracted by my life flashing before my eyes. You're 22, 22. Your wife likes that number. <clears throat> All right, so we've set the table with uh, coincidences, okay? Got so, it. So on last week's show, recorded two weeks prior, Andy randomly brought up Brett Weinstein, formerly of Evergreen State U, where I attended a semester, another coincidence, who happened to be to appear the same week you tapped taped last week's show on none other than Bill Maher's program. And I know how much Andy loves Bill. Thoughts? Well, this is great because the coincidences or whatever you want to call them, synchronicities, I prefer to call them, keep going. Because I now I'm into that I don't speak German show, which f covers all of the right wing. So what, what was the first person he was talking about? Uh, Brett Weinstein. Yes. I've learned all about Brett and his brother, Eric, and they are horrible people. The, you can say this. They are not Nazis and they're Jewish. But, oh, my God, are they horrible people. And one of them, the Brett guy, is the guy who taught at Evergreen State. And he did. He, and when you listen to this podcast, you realize every, almost everything you see that comes out in the news is all like uh, uh, it's like they planned that. So he planned to make a big deal over the fact that he didn't want to observe the tradition at the school where the white people leave the campus. And so then he made a whole big. So I'd be interested to know what he was like up close. Well, I didn't get any of what you said, so... Yeah, you know what? We'll uh, it doesn't on. matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I don't know at all what you're referencing. I'm interested in the all... But I'll just say the general topic is that the alt-right tends to use the same kind of race prejudice from the 1800s, right. you know, uh, couched as uh, as a liter some kind of literary take. Gotcha. No, we just did studies, and uh, white people are have superior brains. I'm just saying that's the, what the study showed. That's what the phrenology shows. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Greg Kelly says, well, the Golden Globe noms are out. And a hearty <laughs> congratulations to James Mason for the nod for his role in the musical reboot of Journey to the Center of the Earth. That didn't happen. He's making it up. I think his duet with the duck was sublime. Can he comment on chances versus Lin-Manuel Miranda? Well, you have to do your thing. Well, I, I think it's fairly clear that the fix is in. 
for Mr. Hamilton, if that is his real name. <laughs> What's he up for, James? Uh, he's up for his performance in Hamilton. That's 17 years old. Not the new Disney reproduction of it. No, I'm sorry. Get out of here with that. I'm, t- I'm, no, I'm just on be- regular envy and jealousy grounds. I'm going to prevent that. He's got enough uh, attention. So you're saying he should have thrown away his shot. If only you understood their efforts. <laughs> <laughs> James, you are giddy tonight. Uh, v- 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 you're v- literally giddy. Some days coming back from the dead is a little light. Is, is, <laughs> it's, a, it's buoyant. <laughs> Dan Marsh says, hi, guys. If the actors being deceased wasn't an issue, which movie would you most like to see a sequel to? And which movie would you most like to see a prequel to? Oh. Well, I'd like to see the sequel to Midnight Cowboy. Right. Uh, where they get him off the bus. <laughs> you mean when he's dead? Sure. Well, where else are you going to go? Are you going to go with he wasn't really dead? No. Why not? Because. It's a today's remake. It's not, it's not can- made back in the old canon. days. No, yeah, it would be with the original cast. So it would be, oh, okay. it would be a dead Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> wow. And a prequel, I think I'd like to see the prequel to uh, 2001. That's pretty good. That is good. Those are good choices. I'm going to go with the... uh, It's called uh, 1992. (laughs) I'm going to go with that movie. It's called The The Squeakle. The Squeakle. Yeah. It's like uh, the Garfield the Cat or something. No, I would go for a sequel. I would like Godfather 4, and a prequel would be Godfather before it started. Can you tell I'm getting tired? It's nothing to do with the length of time of the questions. It's lack of it's commitment, just yeah. my horrible lack of commitment, exactly. <laughs> I'd like to do a sequel to The Sting called The Ointment. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see him. I like to see the, uh, the Sting backwards. And is that is that memento? Does that go backwards? Or is uh, that Benjamin Button? Uh, that repeats. <laughs> I like it to go backwards and get it in, and get the comedy younger, or something. I don't know. No, you you're a lot like memento, actually. How do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Uh-huh. I remember liking that movie though, but I don't think I remember one scene in it. Yeah, it's, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. I think you might relate to it more than you ever did now. Quick. Christopher Walken. One of the hardest impressions to do. I, ne- I never developed a Walken. I'm not even going to try. But you know the story about how nobody could, and then some, one of those guys did, and then they he taught it to the rest of them. Yeah, no, sometimes you, uh, you learn an impression by someone's impression, for sure. Yeah, it's that guy who used to be on Saturday Night Live who's kind of a sleazy guy. Jay but Moore. He is, yeah, he does good do, good do voices. Well, Too he does a good Walken. Yeah, he does. Oh, that's right. Well, I'm, it may be all she wrote. Yeah. Suvid says, man, what a Super Bowl yesterday, as I hear this. I would never have expected that to happen. It reminded me of that one time where the team had the play where he ran, but the guy, you remember. Oh, man, what excitement. Oh, I, I agree with him because I knew that Kansas City was going to win. But what I didn't know was that they would pants Tom Brady because I don't even think – you told me that's not legal, but they pants them. Yes. Come on, you son of a bitch. No, you're uh, yes. Perfectly I, I was, good. I was just, I was so taken aback by your yes ending that I became an, <laughs> I became an audience member. So I think it's good to, and I'll end seeing it there. That's right. good. Okay. <laughs> Mozart says last week you pondered about the possible animus between Bob Dylan and Paul Simon. Dylan covered The Boxer on Self-Portrait, an album meant to turn off obsessed fans. Was that a message? I saw them together in concert in 1999. They did three great duets, named in next tweet. Okay, it's a puzzle. I think I saw that next tweet. Um, That got me very excited. Bob Dylan and Paul Simon, 1999, concert together. They performed Sound of Silence, I Walk the Line, slash Blue Moon of Kentucky, and Knocking on Heaven's Door. Great show. That one and yours. Uh-huh. But then Ricky Caroca 
chimes in with, I saw them at the Hollywood Bowl that year. I believe the same songs as a duet between Simon Set and Dylan Set, while equipment behind them changed out. Simon Set was good. Dylan's incredible. He smiles a lot during his set. Or twice. Huh. <laughs> and then Mozart comes it. back with, let me just finish this conversation. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Uh, exactly. Simon was good. He had a chip on his shoulder about negative reaction to songs from the Cape Man, so he hit that album a bit too hard. Dylan was, as you say, incredible. I remember seeing him doing a little George Harrison esque foot shuffling moves, seemed in a good mood. I love Dylan in concert, even though you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. And I love the idea that, he, I mean, whether it's true or not, the idea that if your album or whatever wasn't received that well, that you would you would torture the crowd with it. Right. Here's another one from Cape Man that nobody bought. <laughs> I uh, and you know I don't I, by the, I don't know them touring together doesn't tell me they like each other. First of all, uh, that's true. But uh, I think we were talking more about the '60s versions of Dylan and Simon, not probably. Uh, being a same room fodder. Right, right. But you know, it's it's just totally possible that Bob Dylan never even heard that song. Which song? Uh, 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 the, oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I bet he did. Is that the desultory philippic? Yeah, yes. Right. I bet yeah, you, he probably did. I bet you anything he did. Yeah, because he would like to... He would have heard yeah. some of Garfunkel's new album. <laughs> I thought you were going to go off on... on uh, as mean Bob Dylan. <laughs> uh, Ricky Carroca says, Gentlemen, a few shows ago, I believe I heard just a tinge of Dennis Miller like snark from Andy's flaccid friend. How was he able to mend fences with his crotchety little buddy? I, I just want to say that I'm I'm abstaining from this joke. Ah, he's deep Much like my sex life. He's deplatforming. <laughs> I just want to say one more thing. I've also developed a rash. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> it's you know what it's created a situation where it's better that it can't work with the rash. <laughs> you laughed. That was a that was a bitter. Not a, that just was a sad laugh. Like really, Andy, you have to go that level. I think I do. Yeah, all right. you do what you got to do. It's your show too. It is. Yeah, Dan says. James Mason in the verdict still reverberates. Mason's cross-exam scene with Lindsey Krauss is unforgettable. I didn't really have a question, just this declarative statement. But I wonder what it would sound like if Mason cross-examined Andy's penis. I don't feel. I don't feel well. I don't feel well. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Mister Little Kindler, you sit here accused of dereliction of duty. Guilty. I rest my case. Uh, you know, are people going to think you're a regular? Who's that DJ who's actually pretty funny where he does all the voices? He's not so, a DJ. So, Andrew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Dan comes back again uh, with, would it be too much to ask for Andy and Josh to follow me so I can reach a total of five followers and grow my, quote, audience by, checks math, 66.7%. Wait, who's asking this? This is Dan again. Dan Marsh? No. And here's, and here's what part of Dan's problem and I'll, I'll, and uh, and that is he goes by Dan 76406350 which that... says I'm a bot I'm a bot oh. hey everybody I'm a bot so, well how does he uh, how's he able to I don't think he is a bot I just think he's put himself in a position oh I see it's exactly that no one's going to be attracted to following his account because of that at name is he doing the eight six seven five three zero nine joke? No, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme nor reason to the <laughs> numbers. So that's my first suggestion, Dan, is uh, change your body at name. Yeah. Uh, and now I'll, 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 you know, I'll give you, I'll give you a thought spiral account follow. How about that? That's good. There, you no, from, you're making, you went, are making it sound like it's. He went from three to four. There we're good. All right, good. Sorry, I've lost the thread here. Literally, because it's on a thread. Uh -huh. I don't know why I said that. Uh -huh. Yes. It's a sampler, a Whitman sampler. Michelle Wisecarver is I here. love you, Michelle. You're so wonderful to me. Gentlemen, last week's episode had me cry laughing when Andy said, maybe I should just stop trying to be a person. 
or words <laughs> to that effect, I nearly expired. You guys completely rock. Also very happy about Clyde's ongoing recovery. Yay. Thank I you. think we're, I'd like to jinx things by saying I think we've hit a roll with our show. I think, like, I think we it's got, can't miss. I think can't we had miss. two good weeks and then we had the revert. This is the reversion show. Okay. Well, I'm just saying. I blame uh, myself. Uh, 66%. I, I've had other problems. I've had a lot of problems this week. What? You, you, you put that, you, you checked that at the door. <laughs> you checked out the door when you come to this podcast. Don't bring your life into the podcast. Jumpy Bean says, have you seen the Scottish comedy still game? Scottish TV comedy still game? I came across it on my Roku the other day, and now it's my second favorite comedy show. I find it funnier with closed caption subtitles on. Otherwise, it's difficult to understand some of the dialogue. No, I have not I'm, seen the Scottish TV comedy still game. but No, I haven't either. But you know what it is now? On my radar. <laughs> uh, M. Ledson. Hello, M. Ledson. Hello, M. Ledson. As ever, thank you for being there, guys. Hope Clyde is doing well. Thank you. Aww. And I love your pictures of your doggy. Uh, not so much a question this week as a book suggestion. Just started reading, reading David Badil's book, Jews Don't Count, and it feels like everyone in the world should read it. I can't count the number of times that I've... Because <laughs> I'm a Jew. <laughs> Wait, is she? Is this a, a like a Nazi thing? No, I think that she. It's probably a book about uh, anti-Semitism. That would be terrible if, if it was a pro-Semitism book. Yeah, do you think and we should? M, vet, should we M. vet? Should we vet this? And all of a sudden, <laughs> M, we, we'd see her more like German. Right. Yes, chance of the magic. She's been using our podcast as a study for her long oh, game. This plan. is exact, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Jason, I will uh, I will uh, investigate that book. Um, Jews don't count. And then, Thank uh, you, M. And if it's you know if it's a trick, you know we'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Parton says, "Gentlemen, I really have nothing to add this week that could be considered thought provoking in any way. So I'm just going to say I really appreciate all the time and effort you guys putting into entertaining us with these little therapy chunks of yours." Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. Unless. It it could have been a, 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 a different tone, and this is how I could go off on Twitter all the time. So it was with your little therapy things, and I could blow up. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Susan's voice is in the background, but she's passing through. Ah. She's on the way to. Don't mind me. Just passing through. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm not here. Could you? Could you hear that? No. Oh. <laughs> what a waste of my time. Uh, don't start pulling at that threat. I know. I don't. I won't. I'm sorry. Uh, Wookie Talkie <laughs> says, uh, Thought Spiral has an underscore. Will the Super Bowl have an underscore? <laughs> I say, give him, give him a free T-shirt. <laughs> it's an over underscore. <laughs> Do you watch the Puppy Bowl? I live the Puppy Bowl. Right. That's right. I'm so excited about the Super Bowl. Actually, I am excited. It's the only sport I like. And- oh, yeah. Fuck it. Well, yeah, I think that's our uh, that's pretty much our load of questions for the week. I could go it's to letters. Letter. I could go to letters if you want. I whatever you want. I still have a little energy, so whatever you want. To do. All right, let's le- let's read three letters. Okay. From Thought Spiral Show at Gmail dot com. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. Oh, I see that's to remind people to keep the letters coming. Yeah. Uh Stu Man Chu writes in to say, Dear Josh and Andy, I have been enjoying the podcast for a long old time, usually on my commute, but discovered something in the past week. It makes absolutely no difference the order one should listen to the past episodes. My phone started playing them randomly, and I did not care enough to find the problem. Thanks to Andy's memory, references in one episode are repeated in many others. So nothing is missed, i.e. MacGuffin. And when the original, but bit is finally uncovered by listening to other episodes slowly piecing it together i.e droopy is like finding an easter egg fun (laughs) thank you for your effort that's a wonderful thing to say and i think it's good advice if anybody isn't hasn't listened to the show or hasn't yeah i wouldn't go chronologically from the beginning but some people like to do that why am i talking just 
punch me somehow through the phone. Consider yourself punched. Uh, Jade writes in to say, "Hey guys, the key insight for improved co- oh, this is a uh, this would be a uh, a Stephen Elton Yates format question." <laughs> But it's not from Stephen Elton Yates, though. Mm -mm. Yeah, no, this is a Stephen Elton Yates style question. The key insight for improved carbon capture technology is that achieving significant cost reductions will require not only a vigorous and sustained level of research and development, but also a substantial level of commercial deployment, which in turn requires a significant amount for CO2 capture technologies. Donuts or cupcakes? Favorite Ah. flavor? (laughs) Donuts or cupcakes? Donuts? Yeah, donuts for me. Uh, and I really like a, a honey dipped. Honey dipped or uh, glazed? Are you talking about? It's the kind that that one place that opened up had the greatest version of them, but then I got sick of that place. Krispy Kreme. Like, what are you talking about? Yes. Yeah, those are glazed. Those are great. Yeah. Oh, they called them honey dipped. I think on the East Coast, or I'm getting it wrong. But whatever the case, we're just was we're talking about the same thing, at least. Yeah. Yeah, I think the best donut beats the best cupcake. Yeah, I think so. And I think the uh, the sort of ritual of having a box of variety of donuts mm-hmm. is much more exciting than a tray of cupcakes. Also, it's recommended for my type 2 diabetes. Yes. You see? Can you tell I'm tired? That's not even a, a, a side. <laughs> <laughs> How is your fake diabetes these days? My numbers are good. Good. But I'm taking metformin, so. So. But the the thing that I accomplished from therapy that was the greatest thing that she had me, she said, I, I, I said, I keep avoiding these two things. She said, well, what are they? And blah, 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 blah. And, I, and, I, and she says, do you think you could do them today? And I said, yeah. I said, yes. Well, I did them at three in the morning. I ended up, I needed a medical excuse to get out of jury duty. And I accomplished that all this week. I brought the form down to her office. I got that filled. And old Andy Kindler would be talking still about how, what am I going to do? Yeah. Medical excuse. And what was your medical excuse? I'm 64 years old. I have comorbidities, which would be high blood, you know, I have hypertension. It's controlled, but it's, and then I have um, type 2 diabetes all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> You don't uh, want me down there, do you? At sixty-four, I mean, that's really tick, not. Tick, I, tick, 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 tick. <laughs> Boom. Uh, Julie Weiner says, "Hi there." Uh, uh, Julie Weiner from Sydney, Australia. Says, so, uh, "Oh, that's cool." Hi there, Andy and Josh. Hope you're well. I heard you don't get many questions from females, so I was inspired to think of one. And coincidentally, I just finished a great book about an L.A. landmark, the Central Library, specifically about the fire that has nearly destroyed it in 1986. Have you ever visited this library? Do you like it? What do you think of libraries in general? Warning, I'm a librarian. This book is the library book by Susan Orlean, who wrote The Orchid Thief that got made into a movie adapt- adaptation. A great read. I'd highly recommend it. Thanks, guys. Love the show. It makes at least one day of my long commute to and from work a bit more bearable. That's really cool. Her commute, That's so great. Her commute to the library. <laughs> well, I have not been to the Central Library, so if you have been... I never you- have either, and now I'm a little embarrassed by that. I'm a little embarrassed by that. I love libraries, but obviously not enough to have gone there. But uh, I, I'm a big Harvey Pekar fan, and he's always talking about the Cleveland, the, the big public library there, how great it is. So, uh, My good friend uh, who I've mentioned on the show, one of my, my first best friends in the world was Craig Smith, and his mom was a librarian. So there was a lot of times where we'd go visit her and just sort of hang at the library all day. Yeah, and uh, I, I, I think that the uh the the idea that they were going to go away i mean they have been in a little bit i mean no they, there's less money for everything but for for people they're still keeping them going to some degree yeah all right there's three questions that's right now i would like to do the the, the plugs this week okay please uh, please okay so look hey please support my movie who who do i who did i think i was it's it's available now on uh 
click on uh, LaserDisc. Well, another show is over. How was it? How do these people feel about it? Do you think they got the pleasure and satisfaction they should have gotten? It was there for them, just as it was for you and for everyone else at the show. But did they get it? Did they have the fun they came for? 